Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are doing a guide for the open world. This video will assume you have completed all of the samsaras, so the first, second, third, the side story, as well as the three side missions. If you haven't done that, just go do that, because you'll get lots of gold and other rewards for doing so. First, we're gonna talk about the couple of things you should do every day in open world. Once you have Higokumaru at level eight, you can get something every 23 hours. Try and be consistent with that so you can have it pretty much at the same time every day. It is pretty forgiving since it is 23 hours instead of 24. So if you like forget one day and you take it a few hours too late, then it'll eventually correct itself over the next few days if you are consistent with it. And the other thing to do is to head over to Shrine Exchange and try and craft one of these jars. Since you can only craft one per day, you should check to see if you can. As you can see, in my case, I don't have enough to craft it right now, and I can't craft the lantern either, and that's because we haven't collected anything yet in open world. Regardless, you should check every day if you can craft one. Next, we're going to be looking at the things you should be doing every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, or the days in between those. Every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, adventure tasks will reset, as well as open world. Tasks are a good way to evolve Miko, if that's what you want. There are a variety of different rewards as well. You can do five tasks three times a week. You may select all five tasks at once, go into open world, and complete them all without leaving open world. If the three options per task aren't desirable, you can refresh a total of seven times between the five tasks. You can additionally delete one more task after accepting it for a sort of makeshift refresh. So once you have the five selected that you want and you're satisfied with, you can just hit go on any of them and begin your adventure. Your tasks are shown on the map in the form of these little, uh, pink scrolls. So what I like to do is see which one I'm closest to, click on it. This one's called Moving Clouds. So we can go in here and track this one so it'll direct us to it. Then we're just gonna follow the arrows to it. And this portal here is the task. You can also see a special little thing for it. For this specific task, the monster receives 50% increased damage when floating. So if you're having a bit of trouble, pay attention to that and do what it says you get the bonus for. When you're ready, hit the confirm button and some enemies will appear. And once all the enemies are defeated, the task is complete, and you can move on to the next one. Also, if your Higokumaru is at a high enough level, you can just teleport there as well. Ours isn't high enough to teleport directly to the task, but we can teleport to some different points of interest here and get closer to them. And once you're done with all of them, you can go ahead and save and exit and claim your rewards. And after completing all five, your adventure level will increase accordingly. For this reason, I prefer to do the tasks first, as Higokumaru's level, as well as the food items you can buy, are directly tied to your adventure level. For each task you complete, you'll get one of these Sakura marks here, and in our case we need one more to get to level 10. Once you're at level 10, you have acquired all the Sakura marks you can have, and you need to do urgent tasks to further increase your adventure level. Another thing to note is that every week on Monday, you will get the rewards shown down here but also you will lose some of your Sakura marks depending on how high your adventure level is. The higher your adventure level, the more marks you will lose. And finally, once you hit adventure level 14, you have a chance to get rare tasks, which are obviously rare, <laughs> and if you happen to find one, you should definitely do it because the reward's gonna be much greater. Also, it seems to be that you have to complete all five tasks before your uh, ad adventure level calculation is set. So for example, I'm at level nine with two out of three Sakura marks, but I don't think on Saturday when it would reset for me, I could just do one task, get that last Sakura mark to level 10, and then hopefully get an urgent task to further increase my adventure level. So now we're gonna be talking about open world and what to do there. Besides the five tasks, you can see down here, we have some other things to do. We need to find and eliminate seven elite monsters, find eight secret events, and 87 other items. Elite monsters will have a special animation surrounding them. As you can see on that Honkai beast over there, some elites will only appear at night, so if you're missing one or two of them, check again at night and you might be able to find them. So once you see one of these elite enemies, of course you're gonna wanna try and eliminate it because you'll get some items, as well as a little boost to your adventure rating. Besides the elite monsters, we also have secret 
events. Secret events are hidden and can only be revealed by Higokumaru's special ability. Higokumaru will notify you when you're close to one, but I prefer to have its special ability always active anyway, because I've noticed there's another item which is invisible, which he won't notify you about unless you have a special ability active. As you can see, Higokumaru is telling us something is nearby, and uh, so we just have to look around a bit. So here, you can see is a special event. By this pink symbol on the ground here, you step into that and you fight some enemies. The other item I was talking about are these basic soul wanderers. As you can see, when we go out of stealth, they disappear. So that's why I prefer to always have Higokumaru's stealth active. And lastly, we have collect. These are the items with a hand symbol floating above them. You can run up and collect them to get some materials you can use in the shrine exchange. What I like to do is stick to one path until I reach a dead end. If there's a fork in the road and something to collect, don't collect it so you know you haven't visited that path yet next time you cross it. It will get easier as you become more familiar with the map and it's not totally needed to get every single item, so don't stress too much if you're missing one or two. Personally, I like to start here in the village area next to this celestial castle portal and basically just trying to be super thorough, making sure you're grabbing everything. There will also be things to collect in the celestial castle, so make sure to check that out as well. Now of course there are some general tips to go over. Firstly being Valkyrie selection and Stigmata. So especially when going for collecting items you want to focus on movement speed as the map is quite large. Some Stigmata have movement speed as a bonus as well as some leader skills. Like Valkyrie Ranger here you can see for example she has a leader skill increase whole team's movement speed by 15%. Also Elizabeth B is very good and an easy to acquire Stigmata to increase movement speed as well. 41% and her HP should be 80% more or less when you're just using her to run around. As for the food you can make in gourmet here. The only soup I've really used is this one, the shio ramen. This will further increase your movement speed by another 20%. Along with that, it will complete all collection actions immediately. So if you noticed, so while I was playing there, you know, there wasn't any sort of delay after hitting the collect button, it would just collect immediately. And that can speed things up and make things just generally more smooth as well. The other food items as well, uh, like these, that increases physical damage or ranged or melee attacks can be good if you're lacking a bit of power. And also if you're low on HP or SP, you can grab one of these as well. Next, we're gonna talk about your adventure rating. This is based on how many of the open world tasks you've completed. You can acquire up to S rank, which we have now. And as you can see, you don't need to be completely perfect to get S rank. We still have quite a few things to collect. We still have a secret event. We still have a few elite monsters. So once you get up to 80 out of 100 points, you will achieve the S rank. And as far as this is concerned, it won't get any better than that. I still do recommend trying to collect as many things as you can because all those items can be used to craft other things. I wouldn't stress too much if you're missing like one or two, maybe even up to three, you know. But yeah, after open world resets, again on Monday, Thursday, or Saturday, you will be given some rewards based on your performance. In my case, what you see down here under S reward. And finally, I know we talked about Higo Kumaro a little bit already, but just as a general sort of overview, she's a helper which can deal damage and also help you in various other ways in your adventure. Her level is tied to your adventure level though. You can see what she can do for you in her window. In our example, ours is level 8, so we have these items unlocked. The next one will be unlocked at level 10, and this is another attack. Also, don't forget to level her up as your adventure level rises. Again, in our case, we did our tasks already and got to adventure level 9, so we can give her some of these and level her up. She also gets a bit more attack, even though we don't get any other special abilities here. And yeah, that'll pretty much do it for this open world guide. If you have anything to add, make sure to drop a comment down below. If you have any questions, you can also drop a comment down and I'll do my best to answer them. Leaving a like if you did happen to enjoy is always greatly appreciated. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.